world's toughest race. A survivor, a survivor style reality show where they needed to race across the island of Fiji. To meet Team Eagle Scouts, let's hand it over to our reporter that we all know, we all adore, and we look up to, our Chief Ambassador Bear Grylls. Take it away. For all of you guys who are tuning in for this, um, first of all, all you scouts around the world, welcome. Uh, really proud to have you joining us, proud of our global family, everything we stand for. Uh, today is special. We are getting to chat with some incredible uh, Eagle Scouts from America who made up our Team Eagle Scout on our Amazon Prime show called The World's Toughest Race. Uh, we are really excited to, I'm really excited to catch up with these guys. Last time I saw them was out in... Gosh, I think, well, I saw you a lot more than you saw me because <laughs> I was watching you at some times where you were really head down and really in the hurt locker struggling um, on that last bit of paddleboard river before you reach the ocean for that final leg. Um, but for you watch, you guys watching, we're going to have a great time, 10 minutes, catching up with this team, hearing about their experiences. Um, so, yes, yeah, so welcome. But first of all, Team Eagles, how are you guys? Great to catch up with you. Look, here we go. You're now live on the thing. Nice to see <laughs> hey, you. Bear. Where are you? Hey, Bear. Nice to see you. Uh, we're all you? over the U.S. Um, we've got some on the West Coast, some through just throughout, I guess. <laughs> um, I'm out just by uh, Portland, Oregon. Okay. And, and, and where are the rest of you guys from? I'm based out in uh, Colorado. Yep. I'm in Oklahoma. Yeah. I'm in Sorry, I'm in Michigan, Corey. next to Lake Superior. Awesome, Corey. And I'm in uh, and then, Lake Tahoe, California. Yeah, of course you are, Katie. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um gosh, it's funny. It must be funny for you guys because it's you know, you go through this whole experience and it's such an intense you know, race and course and adventure and you know, an experience that you've been through. But and, uh, and it is amazing what you, you did as a team. And I think it was a real testament to your scouting spirit and your friendships and your skills and your endurance. But, um, yeah, so how was it watching it? Uh, for me, like, being able to see where the other teams were, and um, I feel like I kind of had my own commentary watching because I'd always be like, okay, I see Team Kukuri Warriors right here, and I remember that we passed them at this point, so we must be, like, just out, out of the camera shot. Like, we were just right there, so... It was really fun to be able to, I don't know, like to tell where I was. And then also just to see how other teams uh, tackled each of those challenges was really cool, too. Um, yeah. I think, uh, you know, each each of us individually remember the race a lot differently. So, I, you know, the experience that the other teams have might be, you know, completely different from ours. Yeah. And uh, from I, Eric, how long? Did, yeah. Sorry, Matthew. Go on. Go on. Oh, no, I was just going to say for me, it was really interesting watching, especially the top five teams uh, and especially two, Team New Zealand really also not only like crushing the course, but also really struggling through a lot of the same stuff that we struggled through. Yeah, I think whoever you are on that race, you know, you, you, it's a battle. You know, you've been such a huge inspiration to so many scouts all over the world who, you know, we had something like, I think we had like three or 400 scout teams apply for the world's toughest race. And, um, and all of those teams and, and many, many more would have been watching you guys really closely. And, uh, and you should be really proud of what you did and, and proud of the fact you, you ended up and you're still good friends. You know, that's, that's the greatest thing. And, um, you know, well done, you guys. How did you feel at the end? How long did it take you to recover? I think for me, it was, I probably didn't recover for like, a couple months um, physically, but mentally, uh, the big thing was the lack of sleep. So I, I remember getting home and sleeping like 13 hour nights for about two weeks, just trying to recover for that. And I actually, wow. I was right from the uh, end of the race, right into school. So that was a, that was an interesting transition. <laughs> oh my God. Do you see, these are the sort of things that people don't hear when they watch a series like this and it's, it's so good to remind people of, you know, cause I think you finish a race and then we had that, you know, party at the end, we were all together and there's a lot of adrenaline and, you know, there's interviews and all that sort of stuff. 
but actually and then you travel and you eventually get home and then it's like boom <laughs> you know <laughs> 13 hours in like two weeks you know it's a good reminder of what you went through yeah yeah what about what about the rest of you how how was your recovery uh for me i felt like um i don't know kind of coming off of all that adrenaline and all of those endorphins like you know through the day and through the night um and then coming home to just like being at home uh was like a big i don't know it's kind of like hitting a wall of, of 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 a sort i was just like whoa and yeah i definitely slept a lot like matt and i just remember my my body like going through that process of recovering my feet took a really long time to heal i remember like they i ended up having to go to a doctor for them for a second just because like they weren't healing like they thought they were and i was coming up with some other um ailments <laughs> that were like residual from from the experience yeah i was gonna say that um one thing that happened I, I, other than like recovering like everybody else and sleeping a lot and ending up always wondering why i'm snacking all the time and why i was like so hungry <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah. Um, I was inspired by all the other athletes to make some changes to my life and like be a little bit more proactive with what I want to do. Um, like a lot of like everybody there was just so amazing. And I was like, man, um, I want to be just amazing as an athlete and as a person as them. And so like, I've really been working on like becoming a better athlete and doing what I can to grow further as a person to be like, all the heroes that were on Eco Challenge, like everybody there was so inspiring. I just want to live up to be a lot like them. <laughs> so tell me your changes. What have you done? <laughs> what have I done? Well, um, I wanted to, I've always wanted to go into public health. So actually I'm, go I'm going back to school um, to like do something that I'm a lot more passionate about. Um, so I'm working on a master's degree in public health through Tufts University in Boston, which is super exciting. Um, I've been a lot more active with, you know, communities and people that I think need to be, need a larger voice in like political processes and need, need allies to support themselves. And so like a lot of that, just trying to do mm -hmm. more than what is just for me and what I can do for others. Yeah. Good for you. It's funny how, when we get a shake up like this, you know, it is like a, a bit like the pandemic now it's a bit that's a global reset you know going through the world's toughest race is a personal reset you know it's hard to emerge at the end of those sort of experiences unchanged and that's the that's the pain but also the the positive side of it and it's great to hear that yeah good for you guys i think one of like the best things for me to come out of eco challenge was just um like being enabled to do anything <laughs> I, I, before we went, uh, I didn't even have in my mind that we would finish. I just was, you know, there to put in my best effort and see how far we could go. Um, and finishing kind of just opened up this door of possibilities that like, I can do anything I can, I can go and I can handle any adventure. And I think that's something that's really cool then to tie into scouting because, um, scouting gave me a lot of the tools to do what I did in eco challenge. Um, so like having those experiences in scouting and then, getting a taste of like a big adventure like eco challenge has just kind of completely opened the doors for like a world of adventures possibilities. Uh, I, I would say for us. <laughs> mm. What about you, Charlie? Yeah. I, I mean, it's, um, I don't know. Ref, um, resounding what Corey said earlier about the other people there. One of the most profound experiences for me was seeing these athletes. These are top tier world athletes that were there to uh, compete in this race. And it was just incredible to watch these people perform and totally inspiring to see people at the top of their game doing what they do best. And I don't know, it puts into perspective the way you think about your goals yourself and how you can mm. solve problems um, and how to approach problems in your life. Um, mm. It was, it was in incredible to, to watch. Yeah, well, I think um, I think that is it, we all need that inspiration every day, you know, and we always got to grow. And I think, Katie, what you said about if you can finish that, you can do anything. And it really is, you know, what a great what a great lesson for all of us to 
take from that that time and it's true you know I, I saw you guys really at your most exhausted and uh and you kept going that's the thing you know and that never give up spirit is all powerful and uh and i just felt overwhelming pride in you guys and i felt overwhelming pride to be part of a world scouting family and i felt overwhelming pride in that you did it you know that you really you showed them and uh, we always said from the day one this isn't about winning it's about completing and it's about staying you know together and uh we always have a thing of you finish expeditions alive as friends and successful but always in that order you know so got to keep each other alive friendships matter much more than any winning and and if you can complete it respect and really you guys have all of my respect i think you're amazing and i really wanted to set up this call because you know i really felt on you were such a big part of the race for me you know knowing that um there were scouts out there really busting their balls to give their all for this and um and i know you know we didn't see as much of you guys on the actual final edit as i would have liked but i really wanted people at home to know that you guys are incredible you're heroes to me and um and all of us in the scouting family just felt so proud of everything that you did and um please come back another time and do it again and and inspire other people and and help them but you guys are amazing thanks bear thank you yeah bear awesome. i've got it and yeah, go on. Yeah, sorry. sorry. I've got a question for you. Um, you know, you're speaking about things that you've seen as the chief scout. Has there been any any ways that you feel like your role as the chief scout has changed your perspective on scouting? I think it's a, a continual daily reminder of that we're part of something special, you know, and, and that sense for me grows every day, you know, and even in this time of pandemic where scouts you know, it's been harder to meet so much and harder to have these big gatherings. You know, we've adapted and I love doing these sort of things. In a way, there's an intimacy and a connection with these sort of things that sometimes isn't always there when there's, you know, thousands of people going crazy. And um, and I like that. I think it's a great strength of what we have in scouting is, is the connections and the friendships and that we help each other kind of you know, get ahead in, in, in whatever kind of things we really want to do. There's always a scouting helping hand beside you. And, um, and I love that. And I see it more and more actually during the last sort of year. I've seen the power of that. Um, so for me, it's always, it's a daily inspiration and a reminder that we're part of something really special. And, you know, so many thousands of people are trying to join the scouts and, and the waiting lists are, are really big, you know, and, and, especially in the UK, we've got something like 60,000 kids just on the waiting list to join scouting. You know, so for those of you, not just you guys, but those, those of you watching around the world who are involved with scouting, we're, we're, you're super lucky, super lucky, and never take that for granted and, and never take your friendships in scouting for granted and never take the opportunities of scouting for granted because look at this team here. You know, look what they've done and, and what an inspiration they've been and how really this for them is just going to be the beginning. They're going to go off and do so many other cool things in their communities and in their lives and in their, you know, aspirations. But um, I think that's the message I always feel for our World Scouting community is, wow, we're really part of something special, super lucky. And, and our role then is to take that and do good things. And as we say in that promise from when we were little kids as scouts, you know, to be kind to be helpful, you know, to help other people, to make a difference, to, to serve people. What a, what a privilege that is. Um, and this team have really been a shining example of that. So, so well done. Uh, what skill from scouting do you use the most in your outdoor experience? Tenacity. <laughs> tenacity, tenacity, tenacity. And, and it's a good way to finish because it sums up your journey and everything you guys showed together on that race you know you can have all the skills and all the gear and all the everything but ultimately you know like the life the world's toughest race and scouting all comes down to tenacity you know this is what we 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 encourage in each other and i believe that that resilience and that determination perseverance is a muscle it's like a like like your bicep 
but it's inside. It's a much more important muscle. And it gets stronger with training and sometimes we fail and sometimes we have to train it to failure, you know, but the more we use it, the more we get familiar with it, the more we, we push ourselves and the more we grow. And that's right in the scouting spirit. And as I said, it's just what you guys showed in such abundance on the world's toughest race. So, so well done. Um, I'm going to finish just by saying thank you for joining for all of you guys out there uh, around the world and the world scouting family. Thank you for joining us for this one. Thank you team Eagle Scout for your friendship, for your inspiration and for your examples of so many of us. And, uh, and we'll see you another time on the world's toughest race. And for all of you scouts out there, keep going. You're shining bright. Uh, keep serving people. Keep loving people. Keep making a difference. You are amazing. Thank you. Thank you.